going on guys just back for another video today uh what i'm going to be painting is i'm going to be doing an s crank in a kind of a unique color it's called bruised purple sunfish this lure actually was coated with true coat but in today's video i'm actually going to be using kbs on this bait so what i've done I've actually already done the base coats. I used my Autoborn Sealer Silver. Then I went back over it with an opaque black, dried it. Then I actually put a coat of gloss black on. And then I used the Quicksilver Chrome. You've got to use a gloss black when you're painting the Quicksilver Chrome for the, the detail of the Chrome to come out. It's a pretty decent Chrome. So what we're going to be doing today, I'm going to be using a 3D stencil that I got from backwateroutfitting.com, Carrie White. And one other thing, I actually put a coat of clear sealer over the chrome, and the reason I did that is I found when you use these 3D stencils, they kind of sometimes, you know, scratch the paint and scratch the paint off, and I didn't want to do that, and I've learned if I do that, it will it actually will not do that and scratch it when I take the, the 3D stencil off. And what I'm going to do is I, I put it on like this. I just put some clips on it. And I'm actually going to spray away from it. I usually try to spray on my little stand here, but I get better results when I'm actually able to flip this over and spray it away from myself. So let me load some. The paint I'm going to be using is a Tim Gore's Bloodline Deep Bruised Purple. It's actually a thin paint, doesn't need a lot of reduction. Very vibrant colors, pretty. Again, I'm spraying on 10 to 12 pounds of pressure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm slightly gonna lift it up and hit it from the top and just let it fade down. And I'm just going to flip it over, do the same thing, a little heavier on the top, let it just fade down the stencil as I go. I'm going to let that dry for a minute, hit it with a little bit of air. I don't like to put a lot of air or, or heat on these, like I said. Some people do. That's just not my thing. I just don't want to push the paint under the stencil with heat or a lot of air. So I'll let that dry for a second. And I will put my stand back up. The 3D stencils are really nice. I've got quite a few and I've got them from different places. Um, Cedar Run sells them. You know, Carrie White at Backwater does. And like I said, they're, 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 they're fun to use, easy to use. Like I said, the biggest thing is just don't, don't blast them where you're blowing paint back up under the stencil. And so you can barely see it because of the chrome, but that's exactly what I'm wanting. So I'm gonna put it in here, lock it in, move my stencils. Got these little clips at Dollar Tree. Uh, they've actually worked out really well. I'm gonna use them later in the video when I do the KBS to hold my wire. Then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the same bruised purple. I'm about to add a little bit more. And I'm gonna cover the top. This is a pretty basic one, only a few colors. I 
Like I said, I'll put a little bit of purple on that top. I'm gonna let it dry. Dry it with the air of my gun. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with heat setting if that's what you do. It's just, like I said, it's just not my thing. I don't, I, I heat set my base coats, but when I start putting my color on, I like to just air dry it or let it dry on its own. I've just had better results with it. Put a little bit more on here. Let that dry. Go ahead and clean my gun out. It's a really cool looking bait. I know it's gonna catch fish. I've always caught fish on purple for some reason. The next color I'm gonna use is actually gonna be the golden high flow carbon black. And I'm gonna do the fin and the ear as soon as this dries a little bit. Go ahead and hit it with some air. I don't wanna touch that, it's still wet. You know, the Quicksilver Chrome, I, I, I really like it for certain applications. This one especially, for some reason, like I said, if you, as long as you don't just muddy it up and kind of let the chrome come through, it actually does a pretty good job. I've heard a lot of negative things about, you know, chrome and how it comes out after you, after you put your top coat on and... And it is, like I said, it's it's hard to get a good chrome paint. So we're gonna get my insane custom fin wheel, which I used in another video. We can go ahead and do this and really won't affect the top. Make sure our needle's not, that it's cleaned up. Go ahead and get a little bit of this black. I'm not gonna need a lot. It's a good thing about airbrushing, you don't need a lot of paint. Well, and I've done this. I'm gonna have to do the ear on this one. Hang on just a second, because I'm gonna do the fin in white actually. So we'll do the ear first. And I'm going to use a smaller one. Let's see here. I'll do this one today. And all you have to do is line it up, line your point up. And I like to kick it up just a little bit. I use that line in the middle of the bait as my, as my guide. And I like to cover it up with black. And we'll go ahead and do the other side. that dry for a minute. Like I said, low pressure get you good results. Spin that around. Let it dry, we're gonna change colors because on this lure I actually I actually did um white fins. It kind of turned out cool. Then I highlighted them a little bit with a black marker and I'll show you how to do that. A very fine one. Clean this gun out. Let 
that draw just for a second. Now we'll get some white mixed up in here. Go ahead and do the thin while that's drawn. Draws relatively fast, even with the cool air. You can see it's already dry on top. And this will be the same. Add a little white. And I'm using just opaque Createx white paint. On the, on the stencils, I do actually like to use this. It's a little thicker than the golden, and I think it just sets better when I'm doing the stencil. I've used them both, and I kind of like this one a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and do this ear real quick, just finish this up. What I like to do is I like to put a little white in the back of it just for some contrast. It usually looks really good. I don't wanna overpower it with white. But you can see it kind of gives it a, a 3D effect. I like that. I'll do the other side real quick and get it done. Just line it up. And there you go. All right, and what I'll do, I'll go ahead and take, take my fin wheel and find the fin that I wanna use, which is this one. There's one on there that I really like. I use it a lot. And I just kind of set it down. And it's kind of light. I may have to hit that a little bit more. So we can see it a little better. Gonna be better. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so we'll go to the other side. And we'll dry that off because I got to flip it over, and you don't want that wet paint to hit that bait and smudge it. So I'll lay it down, make sure it's spraying. Now this one on, on this bait here, I'm actually filling it up with white. A lot of times I just hit the outside and kind of let it be a little transparent looking where you can see the base coat between it. But on this one, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let that dry. We'll take this down just for a second. sticks and we'll dry this up just a minute. I'm gonna let it dry while I clean my gun out. This is not a hard bait. A novice painter can do this one. Like I said, you just have to practice with the with doing your with doing your stripes. You don't have to have a 3D stencil to do it. You can cut your own out. I've done that too. I just thought I'd do that today since I had it, and I had just done this bait just a couple of weeks ago. 
and I kind of liked how it turned out. I was just playing with it and it turned out really well. So then what I'm gonna do is I got these fine markers from Faber-Castell. They're just a, a real thin marker. And what I'll do, you can either do that or I can take, I mean, I can take a stencil edge and do it. And all I'm doing is I'm just gonna take it and I know it's probably hard to see. I've got to get my camera skills just a little bit better than what I'm doing. I just take it and I'll run a line on it. Just run a line across it just to give the fin some detail. Just some detail, that's it. Nothing, just kind of giving it a little extra. Just a little bit extra. To kind of have some fun with this. And it's just a little fine, fine marker that I got. And I just put it on there just for a little bit of fin detail. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my stand back in. Put the bait back on. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of black on the top of this bait. Not a lot, because I'm gonna cover it with some deep purple candy 2-0. Just a little bit to darken it up a little bit. It'll make that purple pop. Not a lot at all. Okay. We'll clean that out. And we'll go ahead and mix a little bit of candy we're going to use. The candy, especially on the Quicksilver Chrome or the Auto Air Aluminum, you, you need to play with that. It is just, the colors it brings out are just awesome. It, it will make your bait really pop. So I'm going to use some more of the UVLS as my carrier for the candy. I'm not going to need a lot. It's only, you're only doing the top of this bait. So I'm going to use maybe five or six drops and usually I use one to one but I'm gonna use it a little bit less because like I said I just the the candies are already super transparent but the less candy I use the more transparent it's gonna be so I'll put a couple drops in there and I'll go ahead and mix that up I am gonna put just a little bit of reducer 4011 in that four or five drops and I'm going to mix that up, let it sit for a second. And it'll just kind of give the black a really cool look on the top of this bait. This deep purple candy is a darker purple. It's actually darker than the bruise purple that I used for the um for the lines on the sunfish. Gives it kind of a really cool look. Doesn't take a lot of this. Still spraying it on 10 to 12 pounds, not a lot. And I'm just gonna cover the top. Let a little bit of that overspray run down to the bars. Like I said, I'm just, I, I love the Candy 2.0 paints, all of them. Some of them I use a lot more than others. But I've actually 
I've got all the colors and I, and I do use them. Like I said, I think it really helps uh, make your baits pop, especially on certain colors. Because the good thing about them is, like I said, if you're new to painting and you haven't used a lot of transparent paints, you can actually, you know, really take a bait that's kind of plain and, and, and kind of dress it up with these paints because they're transparent and they're really not going to mess up a lot. So we're going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up just a little bit. And we'll get the eyes in. We'll take this, we're going to take the tape off the bill. And we'll put the eyes in. I am going to do KBS on this. I'm going to show you my technique on it and how I do it and what I've learned. I'm going to tell you that. Because I know there are some of the guys that are watching this that do still use KBS and there's nothing wrong with KBS if that's the, the top coat that you like. It's really just personal opinion, whether it's Defcon, True Coat, Tamco, well, there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of them out there. My preference is the epoxy, like I've said in previous videos, but but that's just my opinion. I think some of the things I'm going to show you today will help you, especially with the, the KBS. Like I said, KBS can be a little bit tricky. I think we've all um, locked the lid on a can of it. I know I did when I first started. I just, I had a, I had a fit with it. But like I said, it's not a, I think if you do it right, it's not bad. And like I said, you can dip it multiple times um, after it dries. All right, so what we're gonna do next we're gonna go ahead and use the eyes, and the eyes that I'm using today are from Jetson. Oh, uh, Jetson eyes, custom eyes. Oh, uh, these are Purple Storm. They're a really cool eye. I ordered these a while back, and they actually are perfect for this color. He does a great job with these eyes. You need to go check him out. Like I said, I think sometimes us custom painters get impatient with some of these guys that do these custom eyes, but man, they, they take time. And I mean, his eyes look great. And this purple eye works purple. I mean, it works perfect with this bait that I'm painting. It is actually a perfect, perfect color fit. And they just self and he's on. I don't have to glue them. If I can get it off the paper. They're really nice. They're really colorful. I've enjoyed using them. I've had a lot of them. Um, These purple eyes are really nice. They're really nice. I normally would spray another coat of UVLS over this, but since I'm going to dip this, I'm not going to sit here and wait 15 minutes. So we're going to let this dry. And... We're going to set it up to dip it in KBS, and I'm going to show you how I do it. Because the bait is actually done. Like I said, it's not a hard bait to do. It's kind of a cool looking bait. And guys, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Because like I said, I'm still new to this. And I know that I'm probably not doing everything right, and you may have questions. Just shoot it in there. Shoot me some suggestions on stuff that you'd like me to do. And if I'm capable of doing that, I'll be glad to do it. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna go ahead and take this down. And I'm gonna slide this stuff up. And I'm gonna get my KBS up here. And usually I do wear a respirator, but on this doing one lure, I'm not. So I'm gonna explain to you the, the issues that I've had with it over the years. When I first started doing it, when I started dipping KBS, we would take a paper clip like this right here, just like this, and we would try to dip it into the jar. The problem with that is, is when you dip it into the jar, it wants to float. So it's gonna back up into the side of the jar. And I think that's where a lot of people had issues with K. I know I did because it caused bubbles. And it just, like I said, you don't, you want your bait to go straight in. And I think I figured out a pretty cool system and I'm gonna show it to you now. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And like I said, we've all had the issues with KBS locking the lid on there. Make sure you got your, make sure you got your, your <laughs> plastic over that. And I'm gonna pick this up and set this under it. I always set tin foil under mine. But what I do differently than I think everybody else is, I actually got these on Amazon. It's just a rod with a clip on the end of it. And I'm gonna tell you why I think it works so well with the KBS. It actually locks the lure where it's actually straight, where you can dip it straight in and you don't have to worry about the lure backing up. So I can take it and go straight down in the jar I don't ever double dip this. It goes straight down. I leave it for a second and I come straight back up with it. A lot of people don't, don't want to. Now, if I'm only doing one bait, I'm going to let this drip because I'm not worried about bubbles. I'm going to let it drip down. Until it stops. And then I'm going to put my paper clip in it. And then I'm just going to hang it up. I'm going to grab my lid. I'm going to set this back on. Pull this off. Make sure my lid's secure. I'm gonna raise this camera up where you can see it. All I've done, like I said, is clipped it. I let the, I let the excess drip, but I think the key to it is, is actually going straight down in the bait. The bait's not kicking up from behind because it floats and it's not hitting the jar. I think if you're gonna do KBS, you need to go to Amazon and get some of these little metal wire clips. They're very cheap. You can get, I think, like 75 for $10, and it keeps your bait straight, and you can clip it on and just let it drip. I don't have any bubbles in this at all that I see. So I hope this, is, this tip has helped you. Um, if you got any questions, drop them in the comments. And like always, I'll catch you next time.